Let's talk about short barrel shotguns versus something like this, a standard shotgun with a bird's head grip on it. Both of these guns are designed to excel in close quarters, in confined spaces. So which one does better? Well, here's my opinion. Uh, in my experience, and you can watch this in videos, I can run a bird's head grip gun, and anyone can run a bird's head grip gun, every bit as fast and precise as a stocked gun if you invest the time and training to do it. The added benefit there is anyone who can run a bird's head grip gun uh, as fast and, and precise as a stocked gun can also run a stocked gun really well. So 100% of training on this platform carries over to using a gun with a stock. It's not the same the other way around. But let's talk about actually what's, what the benefits are of this over a short barrel shotgun for use in its niche environment, close quarters. Let's compare and contrast these two guns. So, a short barrel shotgun, typically, for almost all of them, I can't think of a single example that's different than this. You're going from an 18 and a half inch barrel and you're going to chop that to a 14 inch barrel. That's, that's this distance, right? Four and a half inches, uh, it's not much, but it is something. And that gun gets a little bit more maneuverable by doing that. And you are getting some serious costs there. Uh, number one, when you do that, you have to register that gun as an NFA item. And all of the costs and waiting periods and all of the weirdness of NFA items comes into play there. But you're also losing capacity, right? This magazine tube on this gun runs all the way to the end of the barrel, as it should on any defense shotgun. When you chop that barrel to 14 inches, uh, what you're doing is reducing the capacity of that shotgun from uh, something like 8 plus 1, which this gun is, to 5 plus 1. That's, that's a significant reduction, guys. Um, so you're losing that capacity, you are paying to jump through the hoops, and you're only gaining 4.5 inches more mobility or room to move. Well, what do you get with this? an 18 and a half inch gun with a bird's head grip on it. Well, number one, it is a shotgun. So if I decide to put a stock back on it and go hunt birds, whatever, I can do that at any time. Uh, and uh, having a pistol grip shotgun, those are, those are legal without any NFA issues for since forever. So um, no legal complications there. Uh, I get to keep the 18 and a half inch barrel, which gives me a little bit more velocity. But more importantly than that, I get to keep my magazine tube long, so I keep my capacity. Now, uh, a lot of folks will say that the difference between this six and a half inch uh, bird's head grip here and the stock is almost the same as chopping the barrel. Uh, okay, but there's still the capacity issue, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. It's much, much greater effect in shortening the gun during use. Here's why. If you just hold up a tape measure to this, uh, this gun, the overall length reduction from going from a 14 and a half inch standard length of pull stock to this, you know, we're somewhere, uh, somewhere like seven, eight inches reduction. So we're double the reduction there already. But that's not how we're running this, guys. When you run a stocked gun, the stock is actually against your chest. So uh, the flat of your chest starts where the gun uh, begins to extend away. And with 14 and a half inch length of pull, that is about where that gun would sit. The thing is with a bird's head grip, when you run them properly using my technique, using the, the uh, cheek weld technique, you are shortening the length of that gun significantly more than just the length of the grip. Here's why. We're going to go from this 14 and a half inch length of pull mounted area, kind of just pretending there, and we're going to bring the gun into where we actually shoot it against the cheek. So you can see that the grip, half of this grip is already behind where my shoulder would be. What I really have here 
uh, is about that length, one fist width of length off of my chest. When we, when we look at it, uh, the actual standoff distance from my body. What does that mean? That means that I'm actually going from a 14 and a half inch length of pull to something less than a four inch length of pull. That's more than 10 inches of reduction in length of that firing platform, of that shooting stance. Uh, means that I can get into much tighter places uh, just by virtue of the gun being more compressed. But it also gives me an advantage in a lot of commonly encountered uh, barriers in suburban houses and in buildings everywhere around the US. Specifically, I'm talking about half walls, uh, like so half walls, three quarter walls, and all of the wonky uh, chest height barriers that you encounter. They exist, guys. When you mount a gun off of the chest, you're essentially keeping that gun at your chest level and driving your head down to the sights. By freeing yourself from having to use your chest in that shooting platform, I'm actually able to bring the gun all the way up. If I need to, I can stand on my tiptoes and take a downward angle shot over a barrier much easier than I can with a stocked gun. And there's a lot of other movement uh, around barriers that is much easier to do when the gun is only attached to your head. It's much easier for me to flow quickly to a shot around a barrier with a cheek weld only than trying to maintain that chest mount and doing the same thing. So, I would much rather folks invest the training in learning how to run this, which will teach them how to run every shotgun, and go with something like this for that niche close quarter environment, uh, then spending all of the time and effort to get, well, not much in the way of actually shortening that gun when you go with the short belt shotgun approach. There you go, guys.